Life as We Know It with Tom Walton. Most of us remember our first job. Mine doesn't even exist anymore. I was a pin setter or pin boy at the local bowling alley in the little village where I grew up. This was in the mid-1950s, and I got paid $3 for four hours of work in the evening from 7 to 11 p.m. All of the pin boys were kids. I was 11 or 12. Most nights featured a league, which meant the bowlers had some skills and knocked down more pins than they missed. This was bad news for us pin setters. The bowler would roll the ball, pins would fall, we would jump off our perch, clear the fallen pins, lift the ball onto the return lane, and climb back on the perch, ready to do it again, over and over and over, hopefully out of harm's way when the pins flew. It was mind-numbing repetitiveness, clearing pins, returning the ball, reloading and lowering the rack. A 16-pound bowling ball is heavy to begin with. Imagine how hard it is to lift for the hundredth time in an hour. Suddenly it feels like 50 pounds. And the pins, you could only pick up two of them at a time, and they were heavy too. But the proprietor wanted us to keep a steady pace. Time was money. More games bowled meant more money, and some of us pin boys were better at it and faster than others. After four hours of that, all we wanted to do was sleep. Today it would be called child abuse. Then it was spending money. For me, the best part was open bowling night, when people who were not in a league could come in and bowl. They were my favorite bowlers for one simple reason. They weren't very good. Consequently, they didn't knock down many pins. A bowler who only knocked over, say, two or three pins on his first ball, no matter how hard he tried, was my new best friend. I had less work and less lifting to do. The bowler who was so bad he threw gutter balls most of the time? Well, he was a gift from God. All I had to do was pick up his ball and roll it back to him. I'm almost ashamed to admit it, but I was rooting for him to throw another gutter ball on his second shot. When he did, I often learned new words I had never heard before in polite company. Fortunately, my career in the bowling business was blessedly short. Alas, even in the 1950s, the relentless march of technology was costing people their jobs, including kids in bowling alleys. The industry developed sophisticated automatic pin setting machines that did the work. Virtually overnight, the machines installed in my bowling alley, I think they were Brunswick, had rendered me obsolete. It was a life lesson learned. I wish I could say I was disappointed, but I was glad to get out of there. I marveled at the new machines and their ability to sweep away fallen pins, or dead wood as we called them, lift them into a spinning drum and drop them into the rack, which then lowered them back into place on the lane, all ten pins perfectly aligned in a triangle and placed precisely where they needed to be. It was a lesson in precision and physics that stays with me to this day. It didn't take me long to move on to my next job as a kid. It was far less labor-intensive, and perhaps it was a precursor of what was to come. I became a paper boy. There was still some lifting, but I got to ride my bike. Life as We Know It is written and hosted by Tom Walton and is a production of WGTE Public Media. Life as We Know It with Tom Walton can be heard on WGTE FM 91 every Monday afternoon during All Things Considered at 5.44 p.m. Or hear past episodes at wgte.org life.